Hey, this is Jeff Johnson. Thanks for stopping by my channel and for checking out this video. This is week 55 in my journey with throat cancer. To be more specific, it was oropharyngeal squamous cell carcinoma. Say that 10 times real fast. Uh, basically, I had a tumor at the base of my tongue that was about the size of two golf balls. It was about one third embedded into my tongue for approximately two years before I was diagnosed in March, late March, I think it was Mar yeah, March 29th of 2018, um, I thought I had either sinus infections or ear infections. I had been intermittently going to the doctor, getting antibiotics, getting steroid shots. I would feel better for a little while, then things would get worse again. What finally happened was uh, during a totally unrelated surgery, my throat was scratched. And while they were checking out that scratch, because we thought they had done some damage to the inside of my throat, they found a mass, not a word you want to hear, which was later identified as a tumor, another word you don't want to hear, and confirmed by a biopsy to be oropharyngeal squamous cell carcinoma. So that's how that started. Diagnosed uh, March 29th of 2018. March uh, 18th, 19th, and 20th of 2019, I went back to MD Anderson in Houston for my nine-month follow-up. The great news, the great report from that is for the third time I've had a PET scan, excuse me, a CAT scan and blood work that show that I am NED or no evidence of disease. So there are no hot spots in the CAT scan and nothing in the blood work to indicate that the cancer has returned. Yay. Uh, they are a little bit concerned about my thyroid. The numbers are not exactly where they're supposed to be, and I honestly don't know what that's all about, so I'm not going to worry about it right now. They tell me they're just going to watch it and that I don't need to be concerned. I trust them. Um, the troubling part of the report came when I asked if I could go back to the office two days a week. I have been... Uh, even through my treatment, working from home or when I was in Houston at MD Anderson working from the apartment, for most of that time, I missed probably two or three weeks of work total, uh, different days that I just was not able to do anything. But uh, my employer has been extremely gracious in allowing me to work from home. They've even provided a computer for me. I'm sitting in an office right now that has, uh, in my home, that has a computer that they provided uh, that lets me do everything I need to do from here. Um, but I'm a people person, and I really enjoy being around people. And I know a lot of folks uh, get annoyed by that person who pops their head in the door and says, "Hey, have you got five minutes?" And then thirty minutes later, you're trying to get them out of their office, out of your office. I really enjoy talking to those people. I, it's it's how I learn what's going on. It's how I keep in touch with everybody. It's how I find out who's having a baby, who's getting married, uh, who's retiring, those kinds of things. Uh, and I miss that. I miss that interaction. That's the one thing that I don't like about working from home. I do get about 60 hours worth of work done in a 40-hour work week being at home because I don't have those interruptions, so it's a, it's a trade-off. But in any event, uh, I was in the room with my medical oncologist and a couple of the doctors on her team and a nurse and a dietitian and partridge in a pear tree. I don't know who all was there. Uh, and uh, everybody was looking at me. They got to the point where the doctor said, do you have any questions? And I said, yes. Would it be okay for me to go back to the office two days a week? Everybody was looking at me. Everybody was paying attention to what I was saying. And as soon as I asked that question, they all did this. No one would make eye contact with me anymore. Nobody would look me in the eye and nobody was answering me. It was as if they were telepathically saying to each other, Who's going to tell him? And so I looked at my doctor and I said, what's going on? You know, talk to me. And she said, well, let, let's, let's hold off on that for, for at least another three months. Well, you're going to come back for your one-year follow-up in three months. We'll, we'll talk about that then. And I said, no, we're going to talk about it now. Um, what's up? What's, what's the issue? And she said, well, you're not really going to know what your new baseline is until between a year and a year and a half after you finished treatment. So for me, that would be the end of June of 2019 or the end of January 2020 will be when I, quote, know what your new baseline is going to be, unquote. I had no idea what know what your new baseline means, so I asked the doctor to explain that, and she said, look, Jeff, when you came in yesterday to have your blood work done, we took your vital signs, and your pulse was 45 beats a minute. She said, when you came in a little while ago for this appointment, you took your, we took your vital signs and your pulse was 46 beats a minute. 
She said, if you had been training for the last three years to run a marathon, that would be really impressive. You haven't. Your heart is not beating 45, 46 beats a minute because you're in great shape and you're extremely healthy. Your heart is beating at that extremely slow rate because it is probably damaged, possibly from the chemotherapy. And so when there's physical damage done to the heart, whether it's temporary or permanent, it can cause changes in heart rate, it can cause arrhythmias and that kind of thing. So there is a possibility that damage has been done to my heart uh, by the chemotherapy. And what she's saying is that for another three to nine months, we won't know. She said that I will not know for another three to nine months uh, whether my side effects are going to get better or worse. At the end of that period, I will know that they're not going to get any worse, but I will also know that they're not going to get any better. Um, and we'll know at that point whether or not there's permanent damage to my heart. Now, I will say that since I returned from MD Anderson for this nine-month checkup uh, in the, the middle of March, my heart rate has been fairly steady around 60 to 65 beats per minute, which is a much safer place for my heart rate to be. I check it daily. I check my blood pressure daily. Um, so I'm less concerned about that than I was, but she was very clear uh, I'm not going to be running any marathons, lifting any weights, carrying any really heavy objects, chasing any bad guys or anything like that. Um, I'm going to have to take it easy. That's not something that I want to do. Uh, I want to go. I want to get back in the game. I want to fight. I want to win. Uh, but I'm going to have to do that in a smart way, which is not going to be a physical way. So what does that mean? It means I wait. Uh, I will continue to work from home. I will continue to go into the office a half day a week for meeting, uh, but I won't be shooting any videos requiring me to carry heavy equipment around and, and follow people and run with a video camera and that kind of thing. I really don't run anyway unless something's chasing me. Um, but yeah, um, I'm 54 years old. I was not in great health prior to getting cancer. Uh, I have a back injury that is 30 years old that has caused me to not be able to work out and not be able to stay in good shape. I was 50 pounds overweight when I was diagnosed with cancer. I lost 62 pounds. I've lost seven more pounds since then. We're trying to get the weight back uh, stable. I'm living mostly on protein shakes, but I am able to eat more. Uh, not more quantity, but different foods and more frequently. The pocket in my throat still causes a great deal of pain. So that's the update for now. Uh, three months from now, we'll start the discussion about uh, what my new baseline is. And I have a feeling based on the reaction that I got uh, in the March 2019 uh, nine-month follow-up evaluation that we're not really going to have that conversation until the end of January 2020. But that's okay. You know what? Uh, I'm alive. I still have my warped sense of humor. I am still around to annoy my wife and embarrass my 13-year-old daughter. And I say that playfully and lovingly. Uh, they have been incredible through this, uh, and it's great to still be here with them. So, thanks for watching the video again. I would love it if you would leave comments or questions uh, in the, below the video. As always, I mentioned I am not a medical professional and I don't want to play one on social media. So if you ask medical questions, I'm going to refer you to the fine folks at MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston. But if you want to know about my experience, what I went through with treatment, what things I used to help with the side effects, those kinds of things, I'm happy to share that information. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day. God bless. And hey, we killed Fred.